Hi, this is Manuel for Maxon. Today I want to talk about the new features of the R20 release of Maxon Cinema 4D. Maxon decided to add VDB volumes to this release. Volumes are a new way of representing objects with distinct advantages. You can do different stuff with volumes than you can do with polygons. Until now, if I quickly create a polygonal representation of this generator here, Maxon used points and polygons to represent the object's surface. So you have points here and these are connected with polygons and then shaded and rendered. Volumes are a different kind of object representation. So if I go to the new volume menu and create a volume builder, I get this tool here. And if I make this generator the child of the volume builder, I immediately get a volumetric representation of the Maxon logo. But what are volumes? To understand what volumes are, let's look at the 2D case. So if I remove this logo here from the volume builder and look at the splines, this is how Illustrator, for example, represents objects with geometry. So you have points and you have spline segments connecting these points. And that is a representation for this M character. But there is a different representation in 2D and that is pictures. So if I quickly open the picture viewer, I have the same Maxon logo, but this time it's a bitmap. If I zoom into the bitmap, you see that the bitmap is composed of individual pixels. So little boxes containing a value, in this case a color value. Outside of the object we have zeros or black. And inside of the object we have ones or white. So to represent an object, instead of using geometry, an image uses little boxes with values in them. And volumes are exactly the same approach, but in 3D. Instead of two-dimensional boxes, we use three-dimensional boxes that are storing values. This is how a three-dimensional volume grid works. So it's just a box filled with little cubes called voxels. And each individual cube is capable of storing a value. So if I now go in there and store values in these little boxes, I can represent a three-dimensional object by using the convention to store ones inside of the object and zeros outside of the object. If I for now remove this shader here, everything turns black and it is a cloner setup. And I created this spherical field here to color these boxes. So that is just a spherical object, so to speak. And if I move it to the grid, you see that all the voxels that are inside of this object here are colored white. And that is representing the value stored in the voxels, and this value is a 1. So wherever the object is, you have a 1 in the voxels, and outside of the object you have zeros in the voxels. And thus you can represent this object as a three-dimensional image. To understand this better, let's make this stuff here invisible. And let's instead focus on a slice through this volume. So that is basically just one slice of this volume. And here I created little text splines showing the values. So if I now move my object, in this case my field representing an object, into this slice, you see that all the values inside of this object turn 1 and everything outside is still zero. So volumes are using the exactly same approach as two-dimensional images, but in 3D. They are storing voxels, three-dimensional pixels with values in them. Although volumes are very handy for a lot of different operations, they cannot be rendered directly. So to render them, we have to turn them back to polygons. And how is this done? Well, again, we can look at the 2D case where we have this image here. And in Cinema 4D, there is a tool that can convert images back to splines. It is called the vectorizer and it is there forever. If you load up an image here, it will create splines from this image. And if I go down with the tolerance, it does this quite exactly. And if you have a close look here, you see that this spline is created where the value drops from 1 to 0 in the image. So at the border where the value changes the most in the image, the spline is created. And the same concept holds true for volumes. What the vectorizer is for images, the volume measure is for volumes. 
If you drop a volume into this volume measure, you immediately get a surface representation. And the surface is created where the values inside of the voxels drop from 1 to 0. But this representation is not entirely exact, because you just have 1s and zeros in the voxels. There is a better representation in 3D for volumes, and that is called a signed distance field. So, instead of using a fog volume, you can use a signed distance field volume. And as you can see immediately, this gives a more exact representation of the object. So, if I make the logo visible, you see that now the volume, the converted volume, is exactly where it has been before. With fog, that is not the case. But what is a signed distance field? I created this setup for you to uh, explain what a signed distance field is. Again, you have a slide through a volume. These boxes here are the voxels. But instead of storing ones here inside of the circle and zeros outside, you can store the distance to the closest point on the surface. In this case, it's around 15. If I go here to my setup and move the slider, you see that you can store different values for every voxel, these values representing the distance to the surface. But how do you tell between inside and outside then? Well, as soon as you move inside, you still store the distance to the surface, but this time with a negative sign. So, inside the object, the values are negative, and outside, they are positive. That is why the whole thing is called a signed distance field. It's storing the distances with a sign. And because of that, the volume measure can recreate the surface very exactly, because it exactly knows how far apart from every voxel the surface is. So, if I now move this slider, you see outside we have positive values indicated by this green color, and inside everything is orange with a negative sign, and all the voxels are storing the distance to the closest point on the surface. So that is basically what a signed distance field is. And the surface is created exactly at the point where the distance is zero. The surface that has the exactly same value in the voxel representation is called an ISO surface, and the value is called an ISO value. So working with volumes inside of Cinema 4D is very easy. Just create a volume builder, drop any polygonal object into the volume builder, and you immediately get a volume. Here inside of the parameters of this volume builder, you have the volume type, either use sign distance field to represent object, or fog. And fog is there for volumes of different type, volumes containing different values, like for example an imported volume from a fluid simulation that is telling about density of fog or temperature or something like this. This would be imported as a fog volume. But objects are stored as sign distance fields, because this is a more exact representation for objects. Next you have the voxel size, just telling Cinema 4D how big the voxels are. The lower you go with this value, the more precise your volume representation will be. And then you have this object list, just listing the objects that have to be turned to a volume. In this case, the child is used, but with this new tool it's possible to use objects that are not a child of the volume builder by just dragging them to this list. Then you see that the input type here is no longer child but link. And this sphere is nevertheless converted to a volume, but because this is not a child of the generator, the sphere is still visible. So to make it invisible you have to do this manually. Let's up the resolution of the sphere to 100, and you see, now you have a volume composed of a sphere and a cube. And because of this volume representation, you can do funny things with these objects. You see, as soon as you have two layers here in this object link field, you get a mode dropdown, and this mode dropdown is set to union. So at the moment, the volume is doing a union between the cube and the sphere. But you can change this to, say, subtract. And if you do that, the sphere is subtracted from the volume. If you move the sphere, this operation is updated live. Very nice. But there is a last thing to understand, especially about sign distance fields. Because if you open this parameter, you get advanced settings like interior voxel range and exterior voxel range. And what are these? 
As you might imagine, working with volume voxels is quite resource intensive because all these values for the individual voxels have to be stored in memory. So volumes need a lot of memory and all these values have to be processed by the processor. So the more voxels you have, the slower the operations will be. And to define an object, really all these voxels here inside of the object and outside of the object are not really needed. We are only interested in the area around the surface. So what these voxel ranges are is, instead of storing all the voxels, VDB does a nice optimization and it stores only the voxels around the surface. So it removes all the other voxels inside and outside of the object and keeps only the voxels that are of interest. And with these values, you can specify how many voxels around the surface are stored. So the lower the value is, the faster the processing will be, but you of course get only voxels around the surface of the object. So that concludes the introduction to volumes in Cinema 4D. If you are interested in what you can do with volumes, please watch the next tutorial on working with volumes.